If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, I'd buy me a good camera and maybe also some recording equipment. <laughs> All right, so where do we leave off here? Uh, battery died, so that's bright. Give you a little bit of this again. Eee, eee. So much for that idea. Anyway, uh, okay, so where we left off is uh, Charlie's in jail and I'm on the run. And I'm hiding at Felix's, and, up in a tree, by the way. And she's saying, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, we've got that. We, we should pick up that scrapbook. And, uh, oh, what scrapbook? Okay, there's this thing called the Abazaba Laboratory scrapbook. What it was was simply a, a diary, so to speak, of, uh, you know, going out and blowing stuff up and you know, making psychedelics and, I mean, just about anything you can think of. It sounds like the perp's fucking paradise, you know? It's like, they spend all their lives spend living in the perp's paradise. You know, yeah, pretty much. But, you know, it wasn't malicious. It was just, yeah, this is what we're doing. This is really fun and, you know. But it included a synthesis of you know, various psychedelics and including up to the day uh, that's happened where it started on that day of, uh, uh, you know, with an entry, well, making huge batches, hope they work out kind of thing. So, but she, you know, her attitude was, wow, that's, that's serious evidence. So we need to get that out of their hands. So let's just go by there and, and uh, demand it back because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's MD, MDA is legal in California. They can't, I mean, God, talk about babes in the woods. Oh my God, it's, it's funny to explain it now. But uh, that's what we did. So the way we were, but, but we weren't so stupid that we we're just gonna walk in and say, "Hi, give us a, give us a scrapbook which has pictures of demolition blocks and pieces of TNT demolition block, you know, boxes that you know cut out and taped into this thing." <laughs> it wasn't exactly subtle. I remember at one point they were asking. Uh, Charlie, if he knew anything about stolen nerve gas cylinders or nerve gas munitions, and it's like, so in other words, it escalated pretty quick. And this was pre-9-11, though, so they couldn't go too far. But, okay, so Felix and I came up with this plot. We're just, we're just going to go to the courthouse in Santa Rosa. We're going to present ourselves and say, hey, you know, that scrapbook is, is, is ours. We want it back, you know, and, you know, unless you've marked it as evidence, there's no reason for you to have it. Uh, you seized it. We want it returned. You know, it's usually people hire a lawyer for this shit, but you know, we're dumb and young and dumb. What a combination, huh? Anyway, make a long story short. Okay, so we drove up and we drove around the parking lot for a while and we figured out, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Now what we did is we divided up, we parked. She went into the office of whatever you call it, uh narcotics inspector, whatever, you know. <clears throat> And I hid in the tree above the front of the building. There was lots of trees around the building. So, And then she walked out a little while later and it's just very subtly shook her head as she came out the door. And I instantly knew I'm up in the tree above the thing. And I just needed to freeze. And as she walked on the sidewalk, a guy came following her and ran under the trees where I was stopped under the fucking tree and looked around and then kept following her around the building, you know, behind the shrubbery and stuff. And so I'm like, Oh, fuck, what do I do? So I waited until I could kind of sense that Felix was a little ways away and nobody else came out of the building. So they either sent this one guy to see what she's doing. I jumped down, ran around, and then I had my blue coveralls on. So I just looked like a worker or something, you know. <clears throat> and I walked around the circle one way and she walked around the other and we met. And as we passed in the middle, she said, what do I do? And I, I said, I don't know. I think maybe we should meet at the car. And she said, okay, I'll see you there. And then we'll, you know, we'll try to time it. And we both did. We both kind of, out of the corner of eyes, I watched each other. And as we came around the circle and the other guys following Felix, he got to the car and instantly we exploded into action. She whipped out the keys, opened the doors. We jumped in, backed out. And then it's just like some fucking Hollywood movie where, you know, instantly the, the two cops ran and got their cars and, you know, unmarked cars, but they had the lights and siren. And, you know, it was very dramatic. For about five seconds, there's a low-speed chase in the fucking parking lot because I said, okay, Felix, this isn't going to work. Just let me out. You're innocent. Just stick to your story. You don't know anything. You just gave me a ride. And she pulled up, and then there was an 
empty parking spot. The only one in the whole complex was in front of a little uh, coffee shop. He pulls in there. I jump out. I say, stay put, stay put. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. I'll see you at home. I jumped out, ran into the restaurant, quickly stripped off my coveralls. And underneath, I just had some regular clothes on. And I just kind of like, you know, yes, I'm just here. And oh, man, it's hot. And, you know, oh, by the way, is there a, is there a back way I can get out of here? And uh, they just kind of pointed. And, you know, so I worked my way through the kitchen. And boom, I'm out. Back door led to a fence. Jumped over the fence. I was on Highway 101 in Santa Rosa. Breathing cars running across the freeway, you know, you know, and then, you know, by the pop, by the time they figured out where I'd gone, I'd already crossed the freeway and merged with uh, uh, people on the other side. So the long and short of it is, they detained Felix, questioned her and questioned her and questioned who was that, what happened, what I don't know. It's just this friend of mine, and he asked me to drive him up here and says something about a scrapbook, and I don't know, I don't know what what do you you know what do you want from me, you know. Uh, I don't have anything. I'm, you know, I'm just a, you know, blah, 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 blah. So they had to release her. And then by that time, I'd worked my way by foot across the mountains in Santa, uh, Santa Fe, or back to, you know, Mill Valley, where, you know, where I made it back to her house. And then she finally pulled in later and you know, it was like, oh my God, you know, yeah, they questioned me and questioned me, but, you know, there's nothing they could do because they wanted you, not me. But, the, you know, the, the sum total is that, you know, I mean, they're not going to give us back the fucking, you know, this fucking Abba's Abba Laboratory scrapbook. I wish I could see it today. I mean, it was like, it was like something the Unabomber put together, but it was a group effort. I mean, everybody that did something really trippy, like launch a rocket or, you know, set off some, a bunch of fucking uh, Tetral demolition blocks. Or if we had pictures, there'd be pictures of, you know, things exploding. And, I mean, all that stuff was in there. It was really cool. I wish I could see it today. And, you know, we didn't hurt anybody. We just were having fun, so. But the way they looked at it was, like I say, they, they were asking Charlie about, you know, and they, and they got pretty close to the bone on a couple things. But he just said, I don't know, I don't know, that's his. I don't know, I don't know. And it worked, you know. And what, what can you say? It's all hearsay, right? So to make a long story short, um, I hid out in various places. I finally ended up going to Mount, uh, Mount Shasta with a friend, which is all detailed in this foo book uh, that I wrote called Methodo Manuscripts. But anyway, for now, I went to uh, went and hid out on uh, Mount Shasta for a few months, and then Charlie got processed, had to get probation because there were no laws against MDA. Wee! MDA was not a controlled substance in California in 1974, so lucky us. Feds didn't want to pick it up, so that was that. So, I came down, <clears throat> met Charlie, and he was working on Felix's Bombs Creek, building a retaining wall, and I helped him. I joined him for, you know, a few weeks. And then, um, you know, I was just going to like, look, whatever I can do to help. And then it looked like he was just going to get off probation. All he had to do was work a little bit. And I was more than happy to help with that. Except I had to kind of keep in the background because they were still looking for me. And uh, so it ended up with me taking off to L.A. Because the people, the guy that was buying our MDA... The, the big buyer was in L.A., so he said, hey, you want to come down and make MDA down here? And I did, and I did. <laughs> and that is another episode. That's about uh, Northwestern Candles and a lab in a little house in Westchester, Los Angeles, where we made uh, DOM, we made DOB, we made some methamphetamine by the... Uh, you call that stuff aluminum foil mercury reduction and we made a shitload of mda and distributed it but to make a long story short uh jim should i mention his last name no not right here was unhappy in the end because he lost money because i came back later it's a long story and i'll leave that for another time but suffice it to say um abazava laboratories pretty much ended Somewhere in the fall of 1974, in, this, in the uh, spring, or whatever you call it, January, end of winter, spring, spring, January 1975, when I moved back to the city, I started going to, to 
Marin, uh, College of Marin in, in uh, Kempfield, California. And that led to some whole other weird adventures like, you know, <laughs> making PC, an ounce of PCP and then continuing to make massive quantities of MDA. Well, massive, you know, no, fucking couple pounds is not massive, but, you know, if you make a couple pounds a month for year after year after year, it starts to add up. <sighs> that was an odd time. And that was at my mom's house. I mean, we, we, we did some at his house. And then I moved back to my mom's. And that turned into a whole investigation. After the bust, after the explosion, the police went back to Charlie's and they cleaned it out. They, they went in there and he had a bunch of explosives, chemicals and stuff. But we were able to get in there like the week before. But at this point, I'm pretty much homeless and hiding. And so I'm literally, I'm sleeping in this abandoned house. You know, that where we had the, the lab where we made, you know, but everything's been pretty much removed. And then one, one night I'm sleeping down, kind of hidden in the basement. And I hear these steps, heavy boot steps going up the thing. And I hear these guys talking. I'm like, oh, fuck. And luckily there was this, like, escape hatch that would drop you out of uh, Charlie's back room behind his, his uh, bedroom. I popped that and I walked just, like, just, you know, walked up to the Highway 1. Walked away, just, you know, didn't run, just very casually home. It was the Marin County Sheriff. Two, two sheriffs were searching the house for evidence after the explosion. And they were following up leads. And they were just kind of like, oh, Jesus, what is all this shit? You know, they were just bored or mystified. We had a, we had a thing of drawers. And one of them said sex. One, had, one drawer was labeled drugs. And the third drawer was labeled rock and roll. And, of course, the sex and drugs ones were completely <laughs> emptied. In the one they were, and there were just tools in all the drawers. But it was just funny that the sheriff just said, "Oh, oh, here's the sex. Oh, here's the drug. Oh, fuck. Damn it, nothing here." So they skipped the rock and roll drawer. Yeah, it was a funny time. And later, oh, okay. well, that's enough for now. That was the uh, bust of 1974. Total unnecessary fire. If we'd studied the principles of chemical engineering, go figure. Hell. We were young, kind of stupid, but it sure did work like a motherfucker. You know, we got 70, 80% yields of MDMA, MDA, excuse me, hydrochloride, white, like salt, odorless, crystalline, beautiful stuff. Everybody raved about it. You know, crystal, recrystallize, and yeah, it was good. Nothing special about it. Two-step reaction, you know, for, for a med chemist, nothing, just trivial. But for us, at uh, 20 years old or whatever we were, it was magic. Yeah, it was magic. 